Have you been asking God, is this COVID-19 pandemic a punishment for the vast sins of our times, for our cultural approval of sexual depravity and abortion, and the turning away from Jesus Christ in our land and around the world? We don't have to look too hard in the Old Testament to see how God has used struggles beyond our control to turn us away from sinful lives and to turn our faces and faith towards him. When King David, who was highly favored by the Lord, started trusting his military strength in pride instead of reliance on God, he was given the choice from three different punishments. First Chronicles chapter 12 says, Go, tell David, thus says the Lord, I am laying out three options. Choose one of them, and I will inflict it on you. Accordingly, Gad, the prophet, went to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Decide now. Will it be three years of famine, or three months of fleeing your enemies with the sword of your foes ever at your back, or the Lord's own sword, a plague in the land, with the Lord's destroying angel in every part of Israel? Now consider, what answer am I to give him who sent me? Then David said to Gad, I'm in serious trouble, but let me fall into the hand of the Lord. His mercy is very great, rather than the, into the hands of men. Therefore the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and 70,000 Israelites died. God also sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But as the angel was on the point of destroying it, the Lord saw and changed his mind about the calamity and said to the destroying angel, Enough now. Stay your hand. There are no such punishments given by Jesus in the Gospels. So are we in the clear? I think not. All we have to do is pay attention to the person Jesus sends from heaven, speaking the warnings to our generation. His mother, Mary, most holy. You're listening to Truth of the Spirit. I'm Patty Bruner. And today, our episode is Warnings from Mary, Queen of Heaven. We'll discuss some of the recent approved apparitions of Mary and how she has asked us to respond to her warnings. And I want to share a small family apparition that involved encouragement rather than warning. At the end, I'll share some of the results when the warnings of Mary, Queen of Heaven, have been ignored. Before I made my first communion, my dad was killed in a car wreck. My mother was seven months pregnant at the time. Almost 50 years later, when my mother was dying, she left us her journal that shared a remembrance of that difficult time. Quite distraught to be left a young widow with two small children and one on the way, she went to Mass to pray. Walking back from Holy Communion that Sunday, she glanced over at Our Lady of Perpetual Help, the church's icon of the sorrowful mother, and Mary smiled at her. My mother was filled with peace. She wrote that then and there she knew everything was going to be okay. She moved back to her hometown, went to college, and became a teacher. And my mom always kept a picture of that icon on the wall, and we regularly said family rosaries. Mary appeared twice to Adele Bryce in Wisconsin without saying anything. And the third time Mary appeared to Adele in the same spot, she said, I am the Queen of Heaven who prays for the conversion of sinners. This is the way the Mother of God introduced herself to Adele Bryce on October 9th, 1859. Adele was a 28-year-old immigrant from Belgium who was walking the 11-mile trip home from Mass in northern United States. Sound familiar? 
Juan Diego was approached 400 years earlier by Our Lady of Guadalupe as he walked the long trip to Mass in Mexico. And within seven years of that apparition, nine million people converted to Catholicism. Mary appeared to Adele in what is now named Champion, Wisconsin. This is the first apparition of Mary in the United States that has been approved by the church. And the apparition is now known as Our Lady of Good Help. Adele was told by Our Lady that she was to gather together the children in what was then a remote area and teach them the truth about salvation. Adele was told to teach them the catechism, how to bless themselves with the sign of the cross, and how to approach the sacraments. The Blessed Virgin Mary told Adele that she must pray for the conversion of sinners and warn them, for if they did not convert, her son was going to punish them. This message echoes all of the approved messages that have come from Mary in the last 200 years. Prayer for conversion of hearts, penance for sin, and the threat of chastisements and eternal punishment for unrepentant sinners. At Fatima in 1917, Mary said to the three children, I am the Lady of the Rosary. I have come to warn the faithful to amend their lives and to ask pardon for their sins. In 1973, the Blessed Virgin Mary gave Sister Agnes Kusuto Sasakawa in Akita, Japan, three messages through a statue of Mary. Bathed in a brilliant light, the statue became alive and spoke. In Our Lady in Akita's second message, she said to Sister Agnes, Many men in this world afflict the Lord. I desire souls to console him, to soften the anger of the Heavenly Father. I wish with my son for souls who will repair by their suffering and their poverty for the sinners and ingrates. In order that the world might know his anger, the Heavenly Father is preparing to inflict a great chastisement on all mankind. With my son, I've intervened so many times to appease the wrath of the Father. I have prevented the coming of calamities by offering him the sufferings of the Son on the cross, his precious blood, and beloved souls who console him and form a cohort of victim souls. Surely, this includes the prayers of the Divine Mercy Chaplet given to St. Faustina, by Jesus in the early 1900s. We pray that prayer often, don't we? Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Our Lady in Akita also said, Prayer, penance, and courageous sacrifices can soften the Father's anger. Have you been offering the little sacrifices caused by the pandemic's shutdown? Have you offered as a penance the lack of freedoms you now suffer? Have you offered the discomfort of wearing masks? Don't let the opportunity for prayer, penance, and courageous sacrifices, even small ones, go to waste. Mary continued speaking to Sister Agnes, I desire this also from your community, that it love poverty, that it sanctify itself and pray in reparation for the ingratitude and outrages of so many men. Recite the prayer of the handmaids of the Eucharist with awareness of its meaning. Put it into practice. Offer whatever God may send in reparation for sins. Let each one endeavor, according to her capacity and position, to offer herself entirely to the Lord. Well, are you familiar with that prayer? 
the handmaids of the Eucharist prayer goes like this. Most sacred heart of Jesus, truly present in the Holy Eucharist, I consecrate my body and soul to be entirely one with your heart, being sacrificed at every instant on all the altars of the world and giving praise to the Father pleading for his coming of his kingdom. Mary continued, even in a secular institute, prayer is necessary. Already souls who wish to pray are on the way to being gathered. Without attaching too much attention to the form, be faithful and fervent in prayer to console the Master. It was on the 56th anniversary day of the last apparition of the Virgin Mary to the three children of Fatima, October 13, 1917, that Mary gave to Sister Agnes of Akita her third message, the most important and serious one, on October 13, 1973. If men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all mankind. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priest nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day, recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops, and the priest. Our Lady in Akita revealed the work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops against other bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their fellow priests. Churches and altars will be sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises. And the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will be especially implacable, ruthless, and relentless against the souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. Mary, Our Lady, and Akita instructs, pray very much the prayers of the rosary. Now, why the rosary, you might ask? I know from experience that when times are the most difficult, it is difficult to pray at all. But the Hail Mary can find its way to your lips. When Pope John Paul II gave the church the luminous mysteries, the beauty of the rosary clicked for me. Now the mysteries flow to remind me of the entire life of Christ, from the revelation of the incarnation and his childhood in the joyful mysteries to his ministry of the revelation of the kingdom on earth in the luminous mysteries, to his great passion and sacrifice in the sorrowful mysteries, to the revelation of eternity in the glorious mysteries. When my husband, who had not known family prayer as a child, and I were again struggling to pray as a couple, we turned to the 54-day Rosary Novena. There was something in the challenge that allowed him, as the spiritual head of our family, to step up. Well, the first few weeks we struggled adjusting our routine, but soon the grace kicked in and we accomplished our 54-day Novena. And now we don't miss a night praying for our family, friends, and the will of the Lord for the world. Jesus spoke in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. Amen, amen. I say to you, if two of you 
agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Jesus does not require you to choose one form of prayer over another. Jesus desires intimacy. But that is brought forth in various ways. The sacrifice of the Mass is the infinite worship. It continues as you step into the moment. All are part of it, and thus it is communal in nature. It's open to all who would enter. And each man and woman can also enter into the personal presence with the Lord. Jesus comes for all people, yet each is held individually in his heart. Think of the youth at Fatima or the yet-to-be-approved apparition at Medjugorje. Each held conversations with Mother Mary in their own time and space. But the time and space of reality brought them to one place and time. Relation to each other witnessed the event to the world. They prayed the rosary in real time together, yet at the splitting of time they entered into eternity. And so this is what I tell you, as you seek to pray, seek to enter the presence of the Lord, you may enter his presence through the celebration of the Mass by contemplating his presence within you and by joining together in his name to pray the rosary. Our last apparition to present is Our Lady of the Word, Cabejo, Rwanda, Africa of 1982. And it's now honored as the Shrine of Our Lady of Sorrows. Cabejo is located in the south of the country, the poorest area of Rwanda. The three seers were girls aged 15 and 16. It was on November 28, 1981, near a Catholic girls' school in the mountainous farm terrain of deepest Africa, that the Blessed Mother first appeared to Afonsine. On March 2, 1982, Our Lady appeared to the third seer, Marie Claire. It surprised their classmates because Marie Claire was one of those who had shown her unbelief the most. In fact, she had called Afonsine, the first visionary, a fool. The Virgin Mary chose Marie Claire to spread her message. One must meditate on the passion of Jesus and on the deep sorrows of his mother. One must recite the rosary every day and also the rosary of the seven sorrows of Mary to obtain the favor of repentance. Marie Claire had apparitions for six months until September 15, 1982. The apparitions of Mary to Afonsine continued for eight years. The seers, one by one, were shown visions of a terrible event in the near future, including terrifying images of people killing each other, bodies lying abandoned with no one to bury them, Trees on fire, an open abyss, a monster, a river of blood, and decapitated heads. In another message, Our Lady tried to prevent the impending genocide. I speak to you, she said, who hold power and who represent the nation. Save the people. Instead of being their torturers, don't rob the people, share with others. Be careful not to persecute, to muzzle those who want to denounce your errors. I say it to you, I repeat it, whatever you do, even though you try everything to harm somebody because he loves his fellow men, defends human rights, fights for the respect of life for for others, and for the truth and all that is good, and even because he fights so that God may be loved and respected, whatever you do, you can do nothing against him. 
The three seers received approval from the church starting in 2001, almost 20 years later. You may be wondering if any of Mary's prophetic warnings have been proven by calamity. Well, at the miraculous metal apparitions in Paris in 1830, the Blessed Mother correctly indicated civil upheaval. At Champion, Wisconsin in 1859, Our Lady of Good Help saw a chastisement coming that seemed to stunningly anticipate a massive wildfire 12 years later, the same time as the Great Chicago Fire. At Fatima, Portugal, in 1917, the Lady of the Rosary accurately predicted the end of World War I, the rise of communism, a great sign, and a second world war. The great flu epidemic of 1918 ravaged Europe and North America and caused the death of two of the three children of Fatima. The epicenter of the earthquake that caused a deadly tsunami on March 11, 2011, is located near the site of an apparition in which Mary, Our Lady, and Akita warned about a worldwide disaster that could inflict humanity. The city received significantly less damage than other parts of northern Japan, despite its proximity to the epicenter. The detailed prophecies at Kabeho horrendously came to pass 12 years after the warnings. In 1994, ruling Hutus began a savage campaign to eradicate the Rwandan Tutsis. In fact, three to 5,000 Tutsis were reportedly slain inside a church where they sought refuge, a building that is less than a half a mile from the sites of the apparitions. Thousands more were killed outside. Overall, between 800,000 and a million Tutsis, the tribe of the main seers, were killed over the course of less than a year. In what has been called the most rapid rate of genocide known in world history, and certainly the rivers ran red with their blood, and their bodies were left unburied. A UN official said that the Hutus had seemed to turn inhuman and sheer evil. Marie Claire, the third seer, was later among the victims of the genocide. Many were killed in the same school in which the apparition had first occurred, making the prophecy all the more dramatic. The apparition site also became a sanctuary as more than 200,000 refugees flocked to Cabedo after the aftermath of the mayhem. What are we to do with these warnings from Mary? Turn your face to the Lord. Seek His presence in your lives. Reach out to Him in prayer and supplication. Continue to walk in His ways. If you do not know the way, learn it. If you cannot find the way, ask for help. If you cannot follow the way, repent. Follow the advice of Father Philip Scott given in 2017. Say yes to what God has allowed and not let it go to waste, but offer it up for souls. There is no growth, he said, without moments of trial, of darkness and anxiety, without understanding. And we are called to trust that eventually God will allow it to end. Allow the trial to last according to God's will and to prepare the soul for eternity. Father Philip continued, Suffering in and of itself is evil, yet somehow Jesus can use suffering for his purposes. Hope says this too will pass. It comes from a faith life faithful to prayer. Fidelity will keep you happy. Follow the advice of Father Jose Meninat, given in 2018. The answer is holiness in the home to defeat Satan. If there is no sacrifice, there is no family life. Ask God to help your family. 
Ask Blessed Mother Mary to help your family. Fathers, ask St. Joseph to help you. Father Jose continued, Today, tomorrow, we might die. We don't know. Anything can happen. All over the world, people are dying. Are you ready to live with him for all eternity? To live forever without him in hell? Always think of the choice to spend all eternity in pain of hell or in heaven and joy. He said we can become a saint very easy with the rosary. Satan will not come near you. It is the family weapon. Follow the advice of our mother, Mary, Queen of Heaven, given time after time. Pray, pray, pray. You've been listening to Truth of the Spirit. I'm your host, Patty Bruner. We encourage you to subscribe and to keep listening and praying. And come back for more with the Holy Spirit. There's always more. Amen. This is the Padua Podcast Network. Padua Podcast Network.com.